sometimes you have to find someone before you can let them go. Hmm. When their estranged sister dies suddenly, two young adults hit the road to retrace her path, rediscover who she was, and erect a roadside cross in her remembrance. Their long and rocky journey reveals much about both their sister and themselves. Writing this script was part of how I processed losing my sister, two sisters. I have a full-time plus job managing a school, as some of you know, <laughs> and was raising two kids, so not a lot of spare time, but I was so obsessed that I wrote most of this between 1.30 and 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, before switching hats to my actual job and getting the kids ready for school. I'd set the alarm for 1.30 a.m. and get up and start drinking coffee and pretend it was morning. There you go. Great. exact route uh, that these characters follow. My husband photographed roadside crosses and I jotted notes in a spiral notebook that brought Rebecca and Rainier's journey alive. These characters are vividly alive for me and I hope you enjoy getting to know them on their journey. I'd like to introduce you to our delightful narrator, Matt. Yay. Yay, Matt. Hello, I'm the delightful narrator, Matt. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sure you probably know, but uh, we have Monique and also, I'm sorry, Solace and also Monique, who are the co-producers of Purple Stable. Um, and Emily. And Emily, who I was moving on to production manager and all around amazing support. And, uh, and now we're going to move on to a couple of the actors. We're all doing this by first name because we're all friends here. Uh, hi, as mentioned, of the delightful madam, I'm going to be your narrator. Playing the role of Rebecca is going to be Emily May. Playing the role of Rainier is going to be Michael. Elizabeth will be played by Solace. Louis, Louis or Louis? Louis. Louis, I got it right the first time. Never double think yourself. Is going to be played by Malcolm. Molly and Lotus by Rhiannon. Carol by Chitra. And Saguaro by Gabriel. Mm. So in the essence of time, this is going to be an abridged version. I'm going to be interjecting. I'm going to be breaking the fourth wall a little, little bit to, uh, to assist you and lead you through the story. Um, the complete script is going to be available upon request, as well as a list of the numerous awards. Um, there are going to be postcards with contact information on the table. Uh, that are going to be strategically placed among the alcoholic beverages because Solace knows what she's doing. Um, make sure, please, phones uh, either off or on silent um, because we are in Hollywood. There's probably going to be some hold for plane to make sure that everybody can hear every once in a while. But without further ado, roadside crosses. Exterior sunrise, Highway 85, Southern Arizona. A young woman is silhouetted against the dawn, walking west along the empty desert highway. She sticks her thumb out as the whine of an approaching semi is heard. Cross spade to interior morning, Chandler Family Kitchen, Portland, Oregon. It is a sparkling spring morning. Sunlight shines on a photo on the wall of a happy mom, dad, and three kids. An older sister, a middle sister, and a younger brother. The boy, Rainier, is now a teenager and sits at the kitchen table poring over a large textbook while finishing breakfast. His parents, Louis and Elizabeth Chandler, are getting ready for work. Louis slaps a couple of 20s on the table next to his son's car keys. Remember, you can't wean them. Go put some gas in that car so I don't have to come rescue you from rush hour intersection tonight. <laughs> okay, I earned that. Thanks, Dad. His cell phone dings. He checks the text. Is that Rebecca? Jesus, she did it again. Oh, she didn't. All night. Why does she do that? She knows the stuff. She doesn't need to study anymore. I know. She didn't sleep at all? Uh, she says she got an hour. She's heading off to her final now. <clears throat> she's 
she's going to be so tired. Elizabeth glowers at a stack of corrected student papers on the table and a Portland State University binder labeled Appreciation of Poetry, Professor Elizabeth Chandler. Who came up with bloody finals anyway? I mean, why do we have to give our students finals, Lou? Because our esteemed university wants to know if we've taught them anything. All finals do is make teachers cranky and teach us to drink Red Bull. Well, drink up, because the train's leaving. Come on, Liz. You have young minds to work with. Um, did you pack your uh, history essay? Oh, shit. Shoot. Rainier dashes back upstairs for his essay. I'll go warm up the car. Lewis gathers a folder and heads outside. As Elizabeth grabs a refill of coffee to go, the house phone rings. Hi, we're just... Yeah. Yeah, this is she. Yeah, yes, that's my daughter. Are, are you sure? Are you sure? How, how can you be sure? That's my daughter. She sinks to the floor, pressing the phone to her ear. Can you please make sure, make sure that's my daughter? Rainier walks in and stops. What's wrong, Mom? Exterior, late afternoon, Mount Tabor Park, Portland. Damp gray mists dip, drip through the heavy, dripping forest. A group of family and friends are gathered in a clearing. Rainier and his older sister, Rebecca, stand before the gathering. On a tree stump beside them rest a simple wooden urn and a photo of a radiant young woman with the caption, Rachel Chandler, February 2nd, 1989, to May 1st, 2009. Rebecca is reading a poem about her lost sister with some difficulty. Their parents are crumpled together nearby. Flower fully, wither beautifully. Dance with conviction, die with passion. Speak the unspeakable, help the unhelpable. Walk when you can't stand. Hypnotize chickens, wear stripes with plaid, Dance on the beach, dye your hair pink, make fun of bad movies, look the tiger in the eyes, wear fishnets to church, dangle your feet off the pier, taunt the universe, plant seeds in your dimples, give your sister the shirt off your back, eat raw cake batter, embrace your mother, outdo your father, encourage children to raise hell, Skinny dip under the stars. Draw horses when you should be doing homework. Sing off key. Wear water-based mascara in the rain. Play in puddles. Rock out. When weary, lie beneath the sky. March on, even when the music changes. On somber occasions, bark like a dog. Wear an evening gown to detention. Live when they thought you would die die when they thought you would live. Flower fully, wither beautifully, dance with passion, die with conviction. Interior night, Can Chandler family car outskirts of Portland. The dark wooded roads are drenched with rain on the drive home from the memorial. The windshield wipers pulse rhythmically. Lewis drives and Rainier holds his mother buried in his shoulder. The urn rests on the seat beside Rebecca. She told me once when she was maybe six years old, wide-eyed and childish, yet wise beyond her years that when she was away from me, she was in two places. And one of them was with me like a star shining above my heart. I always remember that it was such a poetic thing for a child to say. Rebecca's face rests against the cold, smooth glass, staring blankly at the darkened scenery outside. She fixes on a passing roadside cross. She needs a cross. We should put up a cross or, or something there, wherever it was. I never want to go near that place. She never should have been there anyway, alone. I can't stand to think of her alone out there in that godforsaken place. We should go. Her grave is here, right here. No more of my kids are running off across the goddamn country and leaving me. Here, Mom, we're right here with you. No one's going anywhere, Lizzie. You mean no one else? Yes, no one else. Night, Chandler Kitchen. Remnants from the memorial are scattered about. A program on the table with Rachel's dimpled, smiling face. A black coat and tie slung over the chair. Rebecca's black shoes and stockings 
tossed on a corner by her backpack, which is emblazoned with cow. Elizabeth is holding a glass of red wine. Louis sits behind her quietly. What the hell did she want with all that empty wasteland, hot and dried up nothing? She was looking. Looking for what? There's nothing bloody there. Well, Mom, when you live in Portland, you can't exactly go west in search of adventure. I mean, unless you want to do a lot of swimming, so... What else could she do but head east? Well, it's fucking devolution, if you ask me. There's a reason our ancestors went west. Everybody has to find their own path, even if it's the wrong one. Elizabeth slams her wine down. What's the point if you end up dead? What the hell's the point? They have no answer. Elizabeth turns and heads to her bedroom. I can't comfort her. There's nothing I can say to make it better. No. No, no, you can't make it better, Dad. It, it's awful. You can be there for her. You can do that. But I couldn't be there for Rachel, baby. I couldn't be there for her when she needed me. He gulps back the sobs and shudders, then turns and follows his wife to bed. Late night Chandler kitchen, Rebecca and Rainier sit at the kitchen table sharing a couple of beers. Rebecca studies the memorial program. When we were little, I was super jealous that her birthday was on a holiday. <laughs> Groundhog Day? Yeah. She died ten days ago. I, why the hell didn't they call us? She didn't have any idea. I talked to the Ajo Sheriff of Calvary. He was nice. It took him a while to figure out who she was and get a number for next of kin. That's who we are now? Next of kin? That's something I, I never want to be able to. Where the fuck is Ajo? Southwest. Stupid little town in way southern Arizona. Not far from Mexico and very far from home. It's garlic in Spanish. Tell me everything the cop said. <clears throat> he said she appeared to have been standing by the highway hitchhiking when a semi roared by and hit her in the head with the wing mirror, killing her instantly. The driver never even stopped. May not have even known. The cop said it was purely arbitrary and random, and he was really sorry. After all the shit she pulled and lived. And that was this, just the shit that she pulled a year. I mean, we don't even know what kind of shit she pulled after she left home. Rebecca picks up a postcard of Ashland, Oregon lying on the table. She should have stayed in Ashland and done Shakespeare or something. <laughs> Are you implying she was a bit on the dramatic side? Well, that's putting it nicely. I, how about different? Just a little. But I could never stay mad at her. None of us could, no matter what she did. She flips the postcard over and reads the flowery wild hand scrawled there. Dear family, afraid I won't be home for Christmas. I'm on the road. I'll drop you a line once I get settled somewhere. Love, Rachel Baby, grown up. She had a way with words. You know, it wasn't always a kind way. Except when it was. Mom said she was the smartest kid in her English lit class before she took off. I mean, she was always smarter than we were. What a waste. Before she left, she used to send me postcards at college. Silly ones, like Reefer Madness and Prim 50's Housewives saying rude things. Made me laugh, and this is the last one we got. Yeah. Nothing in over a year. Mom's been tearing her hair out. And now the worst has come. S somehow that makes it worse. Like, that she was... Like she was dead before. And then the waiting, and then waiting, and, and then... Was she was she living in Ajo, or just passing through there? Did, did she have any friends there? Or? I don't know. Maybe the cop might have been able to tell something more, but I didn't think that. So. Where's Ajo? I told you, the southwest. No, no, I know that. Like, show me where. She goes to a cupboard and roots around for a map. I haven't actually looked. Why? She spreads out a map of the western states on the kitchen table. Here. Over here, this little... I want to go. To Arizona? Well, Mom and Dad will have a fit. Uh, when I saw that cross by the side of the road today, th those gaudy plastic flowers, I thought, how is there, how is there, how come there isn't any of that in that place? No cheesy flowers or a cross or a note, nothing. Nobody knows, nobody cares, no one even stops to wonder what happened there. 